welcome back to the channel. I have something very exciting. The X5M will be, I'll be putting it to the max, put it that way. And when I say max, I mean it's towing capacity. This would have to be probably one of the highest things, weight things that I've uh, towed with the X5. But, you know, I'm sure people are curious. Diesel owners, this video is for you, okay? Now, I don't have a diesel, however, Towing, I'm sure that if you're looking to a travel trailer, keep watching. Let's get started. All right, so before we begin, I'll let you know um, we're heading out to um, Pismo Beach. Okay, we're taking a trip out there, and I thought, you know, it'd be nice to do a travel trailer, see how it will go. Now, I have the Stealth Hitch. If you haven't watched the install video or don't know what the Stealth Hitch is, please, I have put a link up here and I'll also put a card or a link at the end of the video and in the description, all right? So the Stealth Hitch, obviously, it's um, invisible when you're not towing, but the benefit is for these cars is that it takes advantage of the European um, tow rating, which is 7,700 pounds, all right? So I rented a 28 foot travel trailer. It is um, 28 feet. Um, it is the uh, Grand, it's the Imagine by Grand Design 2400 BH. Now it has a hitch weight of 505, uh, dry weight of like 54. However, it is loaded a little bit. So I'm gonna take it to the scale, I'm gonna weigh it, and you guys can come with me, okay? Now I just picked this trailer up uh, I rented it on Outdoorsy. Um, think of it like an Airbnb for renting your motorhomes. So I rented it, you know, picked it up at the uh, owner's location and I drove back last night. However, um, it, I felt it. I, I'm not gonna lie, I felt it. Um, but I didn't feel unsafe. There are times I was at 65 miles an hour um, and I felt completely comfortable, felt in control. Um, but going for bumps, you, you don't know is there. Um, and I think after this video, what I'm going to do, well, after I do this trip, I think some fluid changes are in order. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get started. I'm going to hook up. I'm going to show you guys my setup. And I'm not running any weight distribution hitch because obviously I can't do that with a stealth hitch. And BMW doesn't recommend it. So... Um, and I don't have any anti-sway system because with the stealth hitch, it's nearly impossible to add a friction uh, sway, anything like that, into it. So uh, what I've done, I just take it slow. And if I feel any sway, obviously I know what to do. I got a brake controller. I got a wireless brake controller. I'm going to show all that, all that setup. All right. I know so many people don't like when I talk so much. So I'm going to try to cut that down a little bit, even though I do enjoy, you know, discussing it. But I'm sure that people here are not here to listen to me talk. They just want to watch the video. So let's go. Okay. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uninstall or uncode uh, the flashing brake lights when you're independent braking. All right, and the reason why I'm doing this because my brake controller or any brake controller usually uses a signal from the brake lights to know when to apply the brakes on a trailer. All right, now if I'm under panic stop, let's say for example, point pulls in front of me and I have to throw in brakes hard, I got the weight of the trailer pushing behind me. Last thing I want is the brake lights to be pulsing because what that's going to do, that's going to pulse the brake, the brakes on the trailer where I may need full braking power. You understand? Also, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flash the car back to stock. I'm on stage one boot mode. I'm not saying I think it's fine, but however, if I am towing something this heavy, I got the drag, not only the drag from the wind, but also the weight. Um, towing the car is fine, but you really, when you're towing, you don't want the extra tune right because the tune is made for acceleration is made for you make more horsepower and torque but pulling a load that's a lot of stress so you in a way you want to minimize that so i'm just going to go back to stock power for now and you know, like i said the x5's got plenty of power i think even the 35i have plenty of power to tow so horsepower right now is not my goal it's just I want to protect my engine and transmission and obviously this is a must-have i towed this without the mirrors on the way home last night um, could not see around the trailer, so I had to rely on the other car's headlights to know if someone's coming up. 
Um, so, I mean, change, changes up, if the point's going fast, that's the risk. But these are a little bit of pain. I got these on Amazon, I'll link them. I put these on the F15, S5, or uh, X5, and they fit that uh, mirror fine. The M mirror is a little bit more of a challenge. I don't know why. I feel like they're the same shape, it's just this piece is different, but I had a little bit of a challenge getting these back on again. Hopefully they, they hold up. Okay, everyone. You wanna see what I'm hooked up to? Here we go. I know it looks ridiculous, I know it does. But let's just show you guys that this X5 is capable. It is capable of doing most truck things. Um, once we hook up, I'll show you guys that and we'll get on the road. All right, for hooking up, uh, I'm just gonna have the camera rolling. I'm not going to be talking to you guys through it because I honestly need to concentrate, make sure I do all the steps correctly. Um, it's just one of the things that if I miss something, I, I just really wanna concentrate, but the camera be rolling. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. And if I have a chance, I may you know, mention a few things. there's a little bit of squat with the X5. However, once I crank it, the air suspension should be able to lift it back up. All right, for those wondering how I'm gonna use brakes, this is the Kurt Echo wireless brake controller. And I'm just gonna plug this into my seven pin. It pairs to my phone. This has the built-in uh, proportional, it's a proportional brake controller, so it should work on the, the uh, I'm assuming there's a accelerometer in here somehow. So it works on that action. And then my phone, I have all the controls. I'll show you that. All right. See the light? It's Bluetooth. It's already connected. The RV plug goes right in here. Okay. And that's that. A few things you should know when you're towing. Um, obviously the car automatically enables towing mode once it senses the plug. So one of the things I noticed, the rear parking sensor is disabled. Um, you get a feature that's handy with um, hooking up, which I showed that earlier. And I noticed when I plugged in, now normally my car reads around like 14, 13.8 uh, volts. And I am at, and if you see it, I'm at 15 volts. So whatever it is, it is working harder, I guess, to keep everything or charging the battery, things like that. Um, but let's get the brake controller done now. Now I've already paired it to Bluetooth. If it's your first time, there's pairing, just like any Bluetooth pairing, you obviously add a pin number, you, you know, do a successful pairing. So after a successful pairing, and it's good to have a phone mount, so I'll link my phone mount and my phone case. Now this is a different phone case. It's got a MagSafe, and when you run a case on a MagSafe phone, it's always good to have the one with the magnet built into the case. It helps complement, because otherwise, if you have a case over the MagSafe, the magnet won't be as powerful. So this one is gonna put this in, it's got the MagSafe, just connect it like, like that. That's done. Now it's gotta find my Kurt Echo Smart Controller. Accept, tap to accept. And just saying that for some reason, if the Bluetooth of the phone disconnects between the brake controller, it's going to remember your last setting. So nothing that you worry about. I have to acknowledge these things. I plugged it in, scan for devices. There it is. I've already paired it before. It's connected. Here's your main screen. You got your sensitivity, you got your output. The output is means how much power will it do at the max? 
meaning like if I put this at 100%, that means by the time I, if I'm breaking, if I had to break hard, it's only it's going to do a 100% of breaking signal. Okay, if I do 50%, that means it won't see 50%. You have to custom adjust this depending on your tow vehicle, your RV or whatever you're towing with brakes to make sure, like I said, doing a heavy trailer, obviously you probably want more braking power. If you're doing a lighter trailer, you don't need as much brakes. Sensitivity is, you're gonna do, I guess it's your, I guess your gain, I guess. Um, you can make it sort of aggressive or medium, you know, depending on, like I said, you can, you can make these adjustments here and you can do it on the fly. If you're pulled over the side of the road, you got a hazard switch there so it doesn't uh, pulse the brakes and then you have emergency. So say for example, I got trailer sway. Um, first of all, you can use it to test your brakes, but say for example, if I'm driving and the, the trailer starts whipping, I can immediately hit the brakes on the trailer independent from the tow vehicle, and that should straighten everything out because you want the kind of, almost like if it's whipping, you want it to kind of pull that, that it's like a string that's, that's loose and you want to tighten it up. So that, think of it that way. But if you break on your tow vehicle, you just cause the trailer to come in front of you. So no need to really go into that. I'm sure if you're towing these, you probably have experience. Start it. Okay. Let's see a test of brakes. Okay. Parking mode off. And impact was detected. Okay. I'm in efficient, I'm in comfort, comfort. good so far. There is a little bit of this action going on when I go over from bumps, but so far I mean six gear. I'm at uh, 47 miles an hour. Okay, I want you guys to hear the engine isn't struggling at all. I, like I said, I know there's something behind me. Okay, we're slowing down. So right now, I think it tows well. Um, let's go on the highway and I'll see from here, but what the thing is I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. But I don't feel like I'm out of control. I don't feel like I'm like really like overdoing it, if it makes sense. Um, you just gotta be careful when you're towing anything. Okay. 
<laughs> the lady looked at me like, you towing it with this thing? And I'm like, like, you know, you don't need a truck. Unless, like, if I own one of these things, I would, I would definitely get a truck. Because, you know, it'd be a lot of wear and tear to do this all the time where a truck is purposely built. Like a truck, uh, and I would say not like, like a half ton, I mean like a three-quarter ton. From my experience from riding, my, my dad has a few trucks. He's got, you know, half tons, three-quarter tons, one tons. Those trucks ride rough when you're not towing anything, the, I'm sorry, the three-quarter tons. I mean, they, they ride very, like, it feels like the rear suspension is very stiff. But when you go over, when you're towing with those trucks, it feels very smooth. The ride is smooth and comfortable. Even if you just got weight in the back, loading it, you know, it just feels very smooth because the suspension is designed to be comfortable when you're towing. Like I said, all the time, it's, it can handle it. Like I said, the occasional tow, you gotta think about it, like how much am I towing? One, you know, three or four times a year. If I had a business where I had a lean landscaping trailer or I had equipment and I'm, every day I'm hooking up, yeah, this vehicle would not be appropriate. I would, I would think of something more, um, you know, purpose built. So right now I'm in seventh gear, cruising along. Um, it's doing fine. Everybody's giving me all kinds of look with this thing. I mean, they see me towing, but like I said, it just, I think it's fine. About to go on the highway. And we'll see how it does. Fifty miles an hour. I can't pick up too much speed because these guys aren't really going fast. No I knows how to drive getting on the highway anyway. They'll, they'll hit the brakes on you. Turn still, let me in, please. Thank you. And you can see on the highway, 60 miles an hour. No sway action going on. I say I'm not touching the wheel at all. Now, this is a big unit, and I am catching some crosswinds right now. But I have towed before with uh, an RV with the sway control. Um, and I felt crosswinds even with the sway system, so. getting the car delivered. Luxury connection to Walnut Creek. They have all the McLarens, Lamborghinis, and all kinds of stuff in their showroom. Looks like that one's enclosed. So I tried to go to eighth gear, but I think seven's appropriate. Winds. Oh, 
don't, don't do that. Don't do that, Subaru. Whoa. Don't lose your life. Don't it's not worth the risk. Man, people, they pull out in front of you. Going a few bumps here. All right. So my thoughts on this. If you can somehow get a weight this or a sway system, I think that adds a measure of safety. You know, I haven't figured out a way for to do it for the stealth hitch. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, drop a comment. Um, and not saying right now I feel uncomfortable, but like I said, I don't want to have to react to it. I'd rather prevent sway. I know that the X5 has a built-in system also in place, which I don't want it to experience because what that means is once the way is active, then the X5 will somehow use the electronic stability program to mitigate, to reduce, um, and or stop um, this way. But like I said, the best way is when you have an independent brake controller and you can reach down, activate the brakes, immediately just, just boom, stop. So I'm in comfort mode. Let's try sport suspension to see how that feels. If that helps with the with the oscillations, because right now I'm feeling a lot of this going on, and it feels weird because the back has got air, the front does not. I feel more comfortable on this tune as well. I mean, on the stock tune, um, I just feel the, the engine was really pushing out a lot of boost on before, and I don't want it to work hard, harder than these two. Because like I said, these engines are made for performance. I could tell by the RPMs, it wants to stay in the peak torque, which is around about 2000 RPMs, no matter what speed I'm at. If I'm cruising at, like I said, 70 miles an hour around 55, but if I was, it's holding the sixth gear. Once I pick up more speed, it seems like it wants to hold and that seems to be the optimal thing. I think this is where the 35D would be more beneficial for this because it makes its torque so low in the RPM band and it makes a lot. Here, the scale's right here. So we're just leaving. Um, 
I think overall, I'm happy with the weight and everything. I'll show you guys what I'm at. The trailer itself is 5,500 pounds. My hitch weight is 660 pounds. Um, a little bit over what the BMW factory rating is, but again, you want 10% of the weight on the tongue, you know, from the trailer weight. So I think I'm within that range. By having more on the tongue, I have, I'm less likely to get into a sway situation. If I have less on the tongue and more weight in the back, that's a sway situation right there waiting to happen. This recipe for it. But I'm comfortable knowing that I'm not overloading the X5. I'm still within my range. Like I said, the weight itself, guys, I, I'm pulling, you know, the car to the track. Right now, it just feels a little bit worse because I'm pulling basically a mini house and the walls and things that you can run into. But you can see the trailer's back there. I'm on the, these little back roads here. I'm traveling about uh, 64 miles an hour and it is smooth. I'll show you guys what it looks like from this view here. From the mirror, you can see my trailer brakes right there. And then people are stopping up here. So I'm gonna apply the brakes on the tow vehicle. Just my regular foot brakes here. And you'll see how this works. I'm just gently applying them. If I were to press harder, it's going to go harder. Let out the brakes here. They might have to slow down a little bit more. Let's try to pass this tractor up here. Let's see if I can make it. I see. That's, where, that's what comes in handy is when you have extra power on reserve, the extra torque, it just pulled. And I, didn't, I wasn't flooring it, guys. I was just stepping on just a little bit. I needed to get some power to get around that tractor before, before the dump truck was meeting me. There's RPMs. It stays mostly in seventh. If it starts to do a lot of gear hunting, then I will take over and do uh, manual um, shifting. This guy is all over the road. This is his trailer. I don't know if he's texting and driving or what. But he's running off the road. Look at him. I love to be able to pass him. <laughs> 40 miles an hour, come on, man. All right, he's going way too slow for me. I'm passing him. That's it. So you're here, I got the cruise set. 62 miles an hour. You can see the trailer back there. Hey everyone, welcome back. Sitting here at the beach. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we are here. Lexi's just taking all of her out for a short walk. I thought I'd pop in real quick and just film. Um, it was a nice drive out here to the beach, actually from our campground. I'm gonna talk a bit more about that here a little bit, but there was um, a long trip, let's put it that way, long trip. But yeah, first, driving on the beach, X5 does great. Never have, matter of fact, I didn't air down the tires yet, and I just drove on, I said, I need to air down the tires. Didn't air them down, ended up driving on the beach. And when I drove on the beach, it was like perfectly fine. I did not see any traction control engagement at all. It was, I mean, it was perfect. Now I did see a couple people stuck. Unfortunately, I don't know if they were full driving up. I did see a couple of trucks 
um, get stuck. Like, like now we end up walking the beach all the way down, down and back, and you know, there's a couple people with uh, SUVs and uh, two wheel drive trucks. And you gotta think too, it's like you know, the cars can make it fine if they stay on the hard, you know, stuff, but um, the trucks, you know, you gotta think, you know, these heavy duty trucks and you're gonna get the two wheel drive, they're sinking down, they're dropping down into the uh, sand, and then you got the SUVs with the heavy motor in the front, and you know, that's nothing out there, so. Um, I think they were able to get out. Some people pushed them out, but you know the good thing is, Pismo Beach. There is a couple of people um, out here. I think they had the, the uh, they help you pull you out um, because if you don't, Pismo only allows one company to tow you off or help you get unstuck, and they charge you I think at least a three hundred dollar fee just to come out. And if you're like a you know trailer or something, there's it's like a thousand dollars. It gets expensive. Um, but yeah, having a great time. Um, just relaxing, to be honest with you. So I'm sure you probably noticed my videos have dropped off a little bit. It's just, you know, planning these trips and work and doing some other things. It just takes some time. So, but all right, everyone, I'll see you back.